Hello everyone, happy to see you here, welcome back to my channel Hi I'm Mathematics. Today we have a very interesting, I would say like quick and relaxing algebra challenge x cubed minus 64 equal to 0 and we need to find our x. If you have your solution, your answer, write the solution down into the comment section and in a few minutes we will check our answer, so it will be, it will be really interesting. So how can we solve this question? First of all, let's rewrite this x cubed right here in the new line, so as a result we have x cubed, yeah, x cubed right here. The next thing we have minus, but instead of this 64, let's try to express breath as a cube. Let's see if it's possible or not. So we have right here 64 on the right side. And first of all, we can divide it by 2, by uh, I guess by 4. Yeah, so let's do this by 4. So as a result, when we divide it by 4, we have 16. We can divide it once more by 4. So we have 4. We can divide it by 4. So we have right here 1. So this 64 can be written as 4 times 4 times 4. But in another word, we can write it as 64. We can write it as 4 as 4 cube. Okay, we can write it as 4 cube because we have 4, 4 and 4. So as a result, when we multiply it, we get uh, 64. Okay, we get 4 cube. So minus 4 cube equal to equal to zero. And right now let's consider it from another perspective. Okay, we have a difference of two cubes. Let's remember a school formula. Okay, so we have a cube a cube minus b cube. Let's remember this formula from school equal to a minus b in first parentheses and in another parenthesis we have a square plus b square plus b square and plus a b plus a b. This is our formula according to difference of two of two cubes. And right now let's apply this formula right here. So instead of a we're gonna write x, instead of b we're gonna write a gonna write four. Let's do this right now. So as a result, what do we have? We have x minus 4 in the first parentheses, x minus 4 in the first parentheses, and in another parentheses we have x squared plus 4 squared, so we have x squared plus 4 squared plus 4 squared and plus 4x plus 4 x. And right now, if you look closely from another perspective, right here we don't have like a factor right here, we can don't have like multiplication. Right now we have a product of two parentheses and this product of two parentheses equal to zero. In terms of basic school knowledge, a product of two parentheses is equal to zero when the first parenthesis is equal to zero, so we have x minus 4 equal to zero, or in other parentheses, or x square plus 4 square and plus 4x equal to equal to zero. So we have two two cases and right now let's solve it. First of all I'm gonna start with this one on the left side because this is quite easy for us. Yeah we have right here x first equal to when we uh, subtract four to both sides we have x first equal to equal to four. This is very easy easy root for us and right now let's look closely at our uh, second equation. This is our quadratic equation to be honest and let's simplify it. Let's see what will happen when we solve this quadratic equation. So as a result what do we have? We have x square plus, instead of 4 square, let's write 16, plus 4x, equal to equal to 0. But we prefer a little bit different order. Yeah, we prefer 4x on the second position. We can easily change positions because we have addition all the time. So we have x square plus 4x and plus 16 equal to 0. Right now, let's solve this question. This is a quadratic equation. So right now, let's use, for example, the basic method. Let's use our coefficients a equal to 1, b equal to 4, and c equal to equal to 16. Right now, let's plug in. First of all, let's plug in it for a discriminant real quick. Let's see what will happen when we plug in in discriminant formula. We have b square minus 4aac. Let's do this right now. So b square, we have 4 square minus 4 times a times 1 and times c times 16. So as a result, we get right here 16 minus 64, which is equal to minus 48. And right now, a lot of students are confused because discriminant is is a negative. We have less than zero. So how is it possible? And I say, okay, maybe we are not interested in real numbers right here because we can't find it. We're interested in a complex number. So right now, let's continue it right here at this point. Let's solve this uh, quadratic equation right here. So x second and third, x second and third equal to. We have the basic formula minus b plus minus square root of d and all over all over to a. Right now let's plug in each of these elements into this spot. So we have minus b, we have minus 4 plus minus square root of discriminant square root of minus 48 
and we divide it by 2 times 1, okay, 2 times 1. This is our basic, basic formula, and right now let's simplify this a little bit. First of all, I want to mention one really important moment. Instead of this uh, 48, let's write minus 1, so instead of this minus 48, let's write the next thing. Let's write minus 4, I'm going to show, I'm going to solve this step by step, so plus minus, square root of minus 1, times 48. Okay, we can easily do this and divide it by 2 times 1 equal to 2. Right now, let's remember a really great property. Whenever we have a square root of a times b, whenever we have a product inside of a square root, we can easily split it, we can easily write it as square root of a times square root of b. And right now, let's apply this rule right here. So as a result, what do we have? We have minus 4 minus 4 plus minus square root of minus 1 times square root of 48. And we divide it by, by 2. Okay, let's continue right here. Square root of minus 1, this is our complex unit. This is our our i, so this is our complex unit. So as a result, we have minus 4 plus minus i square root of 48 and divided by 2. Right now, let's look closely at this square root of 48. It looks like we can express this as 16 times 3. So let's do this. So we have minus 4 plus minus i times square root of 16 times 3 and we divide all of the stuff by 2 equal to okay let's continue this so we have minus 4 plus minus i times square root of 16 times square root of 3 instead of according to this uh, according to this rule times square root of 3 and all over all over 2 equal to so we have minus 4 plus minus square i square root of 16 equal to 4 and we have still square root of 3, we can't find it exactly value, okay, and all over 2. Right now, let's use one tricky move right here, let's divide our numerator by 2, so we have minus 4, we're gonna divide by 2, and plus minus uh, 4 square root of 3 times i, we're gonna divide by 2. As a result, what do we get from here? We get our root, so we have minus 4 over 2 equal to minus 2, plus minus, uh, instead of this, we're gonna write 2 in our numerator, so as a result, we have 2 square root of 3 times i. And we have two, two complex roots. Right now, let's uh, write our final answer to this question. As you can see right here, we find two complex roots and one real root uh, on the top. So let's write our final answer to this question and then we will check it. And after this, I'll give you a few hints for better understanding this question. So our answer our answer to this question. So x first equal to x first equal to 4. x second, let's go with the plus sign. So we have minus 2 plus 2 square root of 3i and x third equal to minus 2 minus 2 square root of 3 times i. This is these are our complex unit, complex roots. This is our real real number, real number root. And you know, a few, few tricky moves about this, about this question, because a lot of students, uh, they say, okay, we have right here x cubed minus 64 equal to 0. They say, okay, x cubed equal to 64, and they try to find this value of x when we raise this to the third power and this 64. And they say, okay, x equal to 4, because uh, 4 cubed equal to 64. And they say, okay, this is a solution to this question. But what about two complex roots right here? You can easily see this, x second and third. And it's turned into a big argument. A lot of students forget about these complex uh, complex uh, roots. And few hints about this question. First of all, you need to mention what is the highest power at this question. Let's look closely. For example, we have uh, x third. Okay, let's look exactly at our question. So right here, we have x cubed minus 64. The highest power, the highest power of variable of our variable is 3. So 3 is the highest power. So it means that we will we'll have at least three roots. So three roots. This is the maximum value of roots. But we don't know exactly how many will have real number roots, how many complex roots. It can be like three real roots. Yeah, three real roots, two real, two real, one complex, okay, complex. So we have a lot of a lot of these combinations, but the meaning is absolutely clear, I guess. We will have three roots in total, okay, three real, two real, one complex, or we have uh, two complex, one real, two complex, one real, uh, exactly the case that we have, okay, to, uh, and you know, it's a really important thing, because when you have the third power as the maximum power, don't forget about the other roots, because when you solve this question like that, when you say correct answer is four, don't forget about the complex roots, because 
because it's it's really important thing in terms of math, and you, you have to remember this fundamental theor theorem of algebra. We can have right here three complex roots, no real roots, and you know, and uh, you don't need to 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 write anything then, because for example, you don't know how can you solve complex complex roots, but in the same way, you will have like, three complex roots, and it turns into a big argument. Uh, you have bad, bad grades according to this question because you can't find our complex root. But you need to know that okay, a third root it means three roots, three roots in total, and then the best way to solve it, it's not inspection method, but a factoring method, so when, when we factor it, we can easily solve two parentheses, and we will have all possible roots, which is extremely important thing in terms of in terms of math. So I really hope you understand my thoughts, I really hope you understand my explanation, I really hope we, we understand why we have three roots in total, I really hope you learned something new, and definitely don't feel bad if you got this wrong, if you need help with any of these classes, I have a lot of questions on my YouTube channel, so I wish you all the best in your life, take care of yourself, write your response, write your notes about this question down into the comment section. I hope I help you a little bit. If you if you want to see a solution to this question, I really hope you enjoy it. Thank you for your time. Wish you all the best in your life. Take care of yourself and have a great day.